ancient Egypt, ivory figure of a woman with incised features. Carved from the tusk, lower canine tooth, of a hippopotamus, this figure is one of the oldest three-dimensional representations of the human shape known from Egypt. It was found in a grave of the Badarian culture, 4400, 3900, the earliest farming society known in the Egyptian Nile Valley. The head, nose and eyes are disproportionately large, but the whole figure has been well carved and then polished with great care. <laughs> its modeling shows a remarkable degree of technical ability at this early date in Egypt's history and its presence gives us some of the first indications for the rich set of beliefs that surrounded death and burial in ancient Egypt. The deeply incised eyes and the drilled pupils may once have been filled with colored paste. Drilling was used to create nostrils in the prominent nose, and mark the nipples and lumbar dimples at the base of the back, a feature exclusive to female anatomy. Other feminine attributes were accentuated with carving. In contrast to the attention to these details, there is little indication of hands where the arms join the body, and the tiny outturned feet are simple projections. The function of this figurine is unknown. It is one of only six figurines, all female, known from the Badarian period. The variety of styles and poses show that there was no set convention for depicting the human body as was developed later. Their variety also suggests they might have had different meanings. The pronounced feminine attributes on this ivory figurine may indicate that it was intended to represent fertility, as a concept or as a deity, in order to assist the deceased in rebirth in the afterlife, or provide maternal protection during the journey. Alternatively, it may represent the tomb owner herself returned to life and vitality. Unfortunately, the tomb in which this ivory figurine was found gives no clue since it was badly disturbed. No bones remained, and the only other finds were a pebble for grinding cosmetic pigments and a few beads. Nevertheless, there is no doubt this was a special object, as hippopotamus ivory was a prestigious material, and continued to be highly valued throughout the Badarian and later. Babylonians plaque, erotic scene. This baked clay plaque appears to show a man and woman having sex, while the woman bends over to drink beer through a straw. Ancient documents of this period include examples of erotic poetry where strong connections are made between alcohol and sexual activity. Baked clay plaques were Massachusetts produced in southern Mesopotamia from the second millennium BB. They show informal scenes and reflect the private face of life. Though their exact purpose is not clear, they may have had magical or religious significance. Sumerian The first writing, counting beer for the workers. On this clay tablet is some of the earliest writing from anywhere in the world. It was made around BB in southern Iraq, known as Mesopotamia. The text records beer given to workers as part of their daily rations. This type of writing is not an alphabet. Instead hundreds of different characters represent goods, animals, places or jobs, as well as numbers, administrative processes, such as types of transfer or storage, and sounds for writing people as names. Most of these characters started out as simplified drawings of what they represented. The symbol for beer is an upright jar with a pointed base. It appears three times on this tablet. The beer itself is shown as wavy lines inside the jar. Beer was the most popular drink in Mesopotamia for men, women and children alike. It was safer and maybe tastier than water. Another important character is the bull tipped towards a human head, in the bottom row on the left. This is the sign for a to eat, and it has what shows us that the text is about rations. Writing is the physical recording of a spoken language. It is a relatively late invention in human development. It emerged in southern Iraq around 3200 BB. Various other recording systems had been in use there, but writing offered an advantage over them. We don't actually know for sure what language is written here, but most experts believe it to be Sumerian, now long extinct. Most of the very earliest tablets come from the site of Uruk in southern Iraq. 
It is thought that this form of writing, called cuneiform, meaning white shape, was invented there. Writing seems to have been invented not for letters, literature, or scripture, but for accountancy. The tablets were found discarded from large temples, later reused as packing material for the foundations of new buildings. Babylonians cuneiform tablet with the Afrohasis epic. Junior gods had to work hard all day. Tired of this they rebel against the senior gods. The rebellion is defeated. One god is killed and his blood mixed with spit and clay. From this the first humans are created to do all the hard work instead. So says the Afrohasis epic from Sipper, southern Iraq around 1700 BB. The humans reproduce out of control. The deafening drumming of their heartbeat stops Enlil, king of the gods, from sleeping. He sends plague and famine to reduce their numbers. Each time Enki, god of wisdom, instructs a man called Afrohasis, exceedingly wisey, how to survive the disasters. Finally Enlil destroys mankind with a catastrophic flood. Again Enki has instructions for Akrahasis. He should build a boat and load it with his family and all kinds of animals. Without man there are no more offerings for the gods, so Enlil is forced to accept the continued existence of humans after the flood. But to keep their numbers down, mankind must suffer infertility and childhood mortality. This copy of the story was written by the learner scribe Epikai as part of his training. The three chapters of the Atrahasis epic were each written on their own tablet. A full set by him survives. Curiously the dates written on the tablets show that they were not written in order. Epikai belonged to a family of scribes devoted to Enki, the god who saved mankind. His tablets were found in the library of one of his relatives. The story was perhaps a favorite in his family. This story was copied and recopied over the centuries. Examples are known from over 1000 years after Epikaia's time. The flood story episode is better known from the famous epic of Gilgamesh, and of course from the version in the Bible. We subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.